be aware that there is this comment or this type of comment always, always, always comes in whenever we want to talk about uh, uh, men's issues. People always think corporations are evil. They're not evil. They have a purpose. They're a machine and make the most money. And how do you do that? You do that by having more consumers, less people thinking, more people looking at their phone. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, we could talk about uh, Iraq. Iraq. Hey, shout out to Lefty Lucy. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the party. So it's an awful time to be human. Man and female doesn't come into it. Um, and an evil purpose. Well, let's stick with with this one. I definitely agree with you. I absolutely agree with you. But the the talk of women's issues are all over the place. Talk of men's issues are not. So it is an awful time for men and women. And I think men and women does come into it because it's different and uh, or it's awful in different ways. But the 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 point of why uh, you have uh, uh, like and the people like Andrew Tate blowing up is because there's nobody better. You have uh, Jordan Peterson. You have, uh, uh, you know, like uh, David Goggins, people like that. But there's no thing. For women, there's, it's, it's, turn on any channel. Turn on any podcast. And it's about, we need, you know, women this and women that. And that doesn't mean that uh, uh, women have it easy. I'm not saying that. In certain ways, y'all do. But that's not what I'm saying right now. So I hear what you're saying, but but the reason that uh, men will talk about uh, men's issues and how it's hard to be a man is because it it used to be easier to be a man, first of all, in a in a, in a way that we didn't we never experienced, and now that's changing. So the the uh, perception is that you know it's it, it's just harder. And, and notice how nobody nobody says, well, what about the men when we talk about women's issues? But heaven forbid. Heaven forbid How dare you? somebody bring up men's issues. They're like, well, women are in it too. Nobody said, nobody said anything about women. It's three dudes sitting having a conversation. So I completely feel you. But but be aware, be aware that there is this comment or this type of comment always, always, always comes in whenever we want to talk about uh, uh, men's issues. And just because we're talking about men's issues doesn't mean that uh, we are ignoring or or not acknowledging that women have uh, issues as well. Uh, Lucy says, we're all tax slaves in the same boat, but yeah, men, men moan less. True, because nobody will listen. <laughs> um, older generations of men were forced to uh, murder in wars. Men now have it easy compared to them, in my opinion. Yeah, so what you uh, what I was saying just before you popped on is that you're, this is correct, but we we have, especially like the Zoomer generation who never grew up without the internet. You can't look at that and be like, well, they have everything that they need right at their fingertips. When in 1940 they didn't. It's not like because the child or uh, as they're growing up in and having the internet be part of what they know, that's just not going to be uh uh, uh that's not going to factor in to how they think about things because it's always been there. They're going to take it for granted. That doesn't mean that that it's not a good thing. But it's about perception and it's about personal experience. Nah, I mean, like Afghanistan. Furthermore, we could look in we could look in hindsight. Or, you know, let's let's talk about Ukraine. Now nah, you're good, boo. That's modern day. We could look in Ukraine and we could see how much money has been mishandled, how much money we've lost, and and yet why it burns down and no one gives a fuck about it. Because yep. all these and I just heard somebody today. Talking about how this is like a, a what aboutism or a, a, a something like that, as if that uh, we can't send money abroad and also deal with things at home. True, but if things at home are not being being dealt with, and we're sending billions and billions of dollars to where it's not needed for Americans, then I think they're connected. Shout out to Nick. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the party. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Welcome to the party. Americans, bro, they are fucking mindless consumers. And they just stare at their fucking phone and they vote the same people in. I'm telling you, there, there is a, it's not a conspiracy, but to like be a man, it's hard in 2023. The only thing we can do, don't go out and buy that new $50,000 TRD. Don't go out and buy that, you know, $100 shirt, my fucking shirt. 
10 bucks from Walmart. I buy yeah. them in packs, you know? Yeah. The best thing we could do, man, is we need to start taking <clears throat> power away from the dollar. Well, D. Lucy says more money disappeared off the books on 9-11 than has been donated to the U uh, Ukraine war. Yeah, they're both. They're, I mean, the forever wars, wherever they are, wherever the money is going, is bad. That's the point. There are there are problems in America that we need fixed, that need people and money to attend to them. And while that's going on, there's money being spent elsewhere. So I do understand that, yes, two things can happen at the same time, but finite uh, or resources are finite. Specific, I mean, I guess technically not, but but you know they could just money print or go burn. But eventually, the bill comes due. So again, just because 9/11 uh, or or the Iraq War and all that was was a, a terrible waste of money, doesn't mean that Ukraine isn't. Two things can. Uh, 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 my point is not a new problem. Well, I mean, true, but I mean, what are we doing to stop it then? All the more reason that we should be like, hey, this is not a new problem. Let's fix this. And what I mean by that, the moment we start taking power away from the dollar and telling men that you are you, your value of a man is not by how much money you have in your pocket, then it changes. Then men are like, mm -hmm. and then we start telling women. And again, that also goes, we start telling women that the value of a man is not the value of one in his pocket. The value of the man of, is what is inside him. And the moment we start spreading that message to young women that the value of, of the man, your your future husband, boyfriend. Notice how he's framing this, that you have to teach, teach the women this. And yes, of course, men, you have to be on your purpose. You got to make sure you're, you know, doing any, all you can, keep in order, get your money up, all that stuff. But it's, there's two sides to the issue of uh, 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 men being unhappy, just like there's two sides to the issue of women being unhappy comes from you know who he is as a person the world becomes better you think that message is is possible to spread to women though no i don't think there's so. no chance bro dude you just said it i though. feel like women are naturally like trained like we're animals at the end of the day yeah right? no we want to feel like we're, women, women are naturally chaired or like trained to like want to be taken care of uh, no i agree i agree but it's like and i feel like like success and money they're just like naturally attracted to but they are well yes because they are uh, like that's so that naturally they were uh uh you know women had to find a man you know talking going back to the caveman days because then they would you know they would get eaten or, or whatever they needed the uh, uh protection of the tribe and specifically one man and uh, of course to procreate so um i mean that it's it's just a hangover effect because now money and shiny things are a sign that you are a capable, uh, uh, that you are capable of keeping her safe. Uh, Love you, Lucy said. As long as America still thinks it, it, it's the hall monitor of the world, the problem will persist. Bingo. I 100% agree, and I bet I, I get it. I get it that there are there there are promises in place. I get it that there, uh, you know, there's there's. Uh, like bigger problems that come from smaller problems that if we don't fix the smaller problem that it could lead to a bigger problem. I understand all of that, but it just seems like we're so trigger happy on anything to do with war everywhere. And I don't think that's like a crazy conspiratorial thing to say. And it's, it's just over and over and over and over. America has got to be the hall monitor. America world police. It's just not the way to go. It's just not the way to go. We don't live in the same world that we did when when NATO was uh, 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 erected, established. You know what I mean? We don't live in that world anymore. We're not that same country, and the, the, the rest of the world doesn't look the same either. So why are we still acting like it? it does not make any sense to me. There is there's there are certain things we are natural. We want to fuck everything. We I want to fight everybody. <laughs> like we there's all these natural instincts, but. When you raise a daughter, when you raise a daughter on TikTok, on you, on Instagram, when you're seeing, you know, fakeness, when you're seeing people in Bugattis, they, people take pictures in front of private fucking jets. People wear $40,000 fucking watches. Baller. Like it, is, it comes down to raising your daughter and your child with respect. We're already fucked, bro. We're already fucked. They're going to look at our podcast and you're going to be like, oh, my dad. These guys are fucking losers. My dad's a piece of shit. <laughs> yeah piece of shit with fucking money though so you're not a piece of shit yeah. but if you were to have a kid would you would you instill good values in this child for sure yeah what do, you, what do you think about the girls that like i've seen it a few times where the the family doesn't necessarily have money and then the girl blows up on whatever social media and then makes her family rich that way 
And like she well, basically you're pimping out your kid. Yep. Yeah, she's basically ma- making you're bringing you're, more money than her father. And and the guy here's the thing: I was poor and miserable, and I have money, and and I'm happy. Like life's life's different when you have money. Like like when I was poor, and somebody asked me for a dollar, I was like, "Fuck you!" And every now and then, I'll see a GoFundMe, and I'll be like, "I'm gonna go donate." Oh, no. Having money, once you lose the stress of like, "Oh, I'm poor, I'm worthless," but this this is what it comes back down to. I can't imagine, guys. Like, I cannot imagine the notion that you just, like, don't have to worry about money. And I, I, you know, I did not grow up poor. But, you know, obviously, as an adult, I have shit to pay uh, uh, shit to pay for. Like, insane. I Just, like, yeah, all my bills are paid for, and I have extra money, so much so that I don't even need to count it or worry about it. I just buy the things that I like, especially, especially if you are somebody who doesn't have expensive taste. That must be the sweet life. Thanks so much for watching, guys. If you enjoyed that clip, check out the full live stream link in the bio and catch me live every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 8 p.m. Eastern. See you there.